Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Makeup and Queer Magic, where we are... Hello cute and hello queer. Yes! Today I have a very special guest with me, Eli, who is phenomenal, also super hot, but also taken, so back off. <laughs> Uh, not by me, but, you know, be respectful, keep the comments decent. I mean, it's cool. You can say... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> slide through with the compliments. Definitely slide through with the compliments. Uh, Eli and I go way back. Well, like, we go back. We worked together mm -hmm. um, at a nonprofit to help trans and queer youth of color in public schools throughout the U.S., and that's how we met. So what is some of the work that you're currently doing? Um, so I do lots of things. Um, I throw <laughs> I throw uh, parties around the Bay Area that are uh, centered around queer and trans folks of color. So we like to highlight um, QTPOC DJs, um, artists, creatives, entrepreneurs, organizers, activists. Um, and so yeah, I do that with some other folks. So my, my DJ crew is called Honey's and Hot Sauce. And then I also um, just started a small business. It's a music and creative production house. It's called Tender Boys Club. Um, and I do that with my homie and creative partner, Wazi, um, who's based in Brooklyn. Uh, so yeah, uh, and uh, I DJ. That's a, um, so there's like, uh, I do lots of creative things that also like flow into Tender Boys Club and one of those things is DJing um, and then I also do some fashion things, um, modeling, um, and then trying to get clo this clothing line up yes. under Tender Boys Club. So that's some things that are happening with me. Awesome. <clears throat> I love it. I love how like each of those things that you're involved in has an element of like creative artistic kind of expression mm -hmm. like I feel like for me I'm super trying to get in touch with my like creative side and my side that's like more artistic mm -hmm. and I feel like that is definitely where I'm kind of finding myself with like the world of makeup mm -hmm. and I think that definitely I'm hearing that you're like doing fashion and music mm -hmm. and community work and to me that is all so important so thank you for doing that work thank you yeah it's it's fun, um, and it's definitely like what I'm passionate about. Um, and I should also like mention um, Tender Boys Club. You know, it's started created by two trans masculine folks of color, um, and it really centers, um, or like really looks at like what healthy masculinity can look like, um, mm -hmm. and really centering tenderness and softness, and really trying to create dialogue around masculine masculinity in this world which is a lot right a lot of toxic masculinity and this patriarchal or masculinity within this patriarchal society um and what that's become um and yeah just putting out creative work and art that can spark conversation have those conversations mm -hmm. um so yeah and for me as a trans masculine person and as someone who is read as a man, you know, 99% of the time. We talked about this, there's always a like, random 1% where I get mis- oh. <clears throat> So as a transmasculine person um, in this world who gets read as a man, like 99% of the time, and we talked earlier about how there's like this random 1% where I still get misgendered, it's really whatever, it's beyond me and I laugh. But um, as someone with that privilege and walking in this world, I recognize, you know, it's, it, I feel that I have an obligation in this world to do the work of, one, unpacking my fucked up, internalized shit and the things that I have learned in this world that we live in, this white supremacist world that we live in, and two, to also fucking check other masculine people. Um, and for me, I feel like putting out creative stuff and creating those dialogues and starting those conversations is a way for me to do that in a way that's also makes me feel safe physically, most importantly. Um, but yeah. I mean, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> There's like a hundred thousand things that I want to say, uh, like, but I want to keep your voice centered in this moment and I want to uplift it by saying 
thank you. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing because as a trans masculine person, you could, I feel like, easily fall into that toxic masculinity that rewards you when you do exhibit all of the toxicity that we celebrate like masculine people for. Mm -hmm. And you are consciously and actively challenging that. So that is powerful. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's that's the, that's the necessary work that needs to be done. It's also really difficult work too. I mean, internal work in general is very difficult to do. Um, but yeah, I mean like that I have to as a masculine person in this world, so. Mm, that's really beautiful and really poetic. Thank you, thank you for doing this work. It, I think it really helps folks have a better understanding of how masculinity can be and in essence, the way that you're engaging with masculinity, it's not toxic. Right, and, and that's the thing, right? Like, I think that we, I'm speaking very generally here, but like yeah. masculinity isn't bad, but there are like toxic things about masculinity, right? That are trash and harmful and like, it's yeah. And that's what we need to look at and talk and like. Can you give the viewers like an example? Oh goodness. I mean, or we don't have to. Go to, <laughs> to. I mean, like, there's a lot. I, I can mean, think I of. think that like just in general. So for me, I don't know. I well, my experience. You know, I was raised female. Um, I see the world. You know, as trans folks, we see the world differently, right? We have had these multiple lives and experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know, I, I, for me, I'm always wondering like, okay, how much space am I taking up? Whether it's physically, when I'm talking, like I really have to check myself when I'm like in a room full of femmes and I'm like, yo, am I talking too much right now? Cause I really need to step back or like shut up and listen right now. Or, you know, just even like things like that. Or if I'm in public out, I don't know, on the bus or like, you know, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm not man, man spreading, fuck that shit. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. Just, mansplaining, manspreading, <laughs> like all the things that I think masculine people do that sometimes they, th most of the time, they're not even really thinking of. Right, and they're not aware. Mm, mm, yeah. Because that's how privilege works. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's, um, yeah, just, yeah, really, for me, I don't know, I've just been like reflecting on my behaviors in the past and like you know what's been good what's not been good and like you know what needs to sh you know and, and it's just like recognizing like the world that we live in and the world has taught us some really fucked up shit that we've internalized that we have played out in our lives have acted you know whatever um and i think yeah we it's our job to hold ourselves accountable yeah and, and like really learn and unlearn that shit and like change our behavior or whatever you know that is so real and like I I think that I can relate in a way that I'm consistently trying to challenge myself to unlearn how I navigate through the world as a as like a white body unconsciously moving through the world with my privilege whereas now I'm trying to consciously think about how my white privilege plays into every day of my life and my daily interactions with people strangers friends family whoever and how um, I'm, I'm unlearning all of the ways that I've really taken advantage of that by just being completely clueless around that and really checking in with myself to make sure that I'm not, like you mentioned, like not taking up too much space or, um, you know, checking in with folks and making sure that I'm like, I'm not overstepping. There's a difference between me being an ally and an advocate and overstepping. And so I think that me, one of the most beautiful things that I've been working on and I'm still working on is learning how to keep the voices centered within communities that I would like to uplift and that I would like to be an ally to and for. Mm -hmm. Not go in and say, because I'm trans, I know exactly what it's like for you too. Because it's not the same. For a white trans person, it is not the same as, uh, you do not have the same lived experience as a trans person of color, right? White people have white privilege. 
and that's that. End of video. No, just kidding. <laughs> JK. So let's talk about love. No, just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> JK, JK, JK. So uh, what are one of the things that you've recently done? Because we both live in the Bay. Well, yeah. are you okay if we yeah. tell people like, so we live in the Bay Area mm -hmm. in a very, I would say, like liberal, you know, place. Yeah, it's a bubble. But it's definitely a bubble, and is it really as liberal and open as people like to say it is, or think that it is? Are you asking my opinion, yeah? I feel like, it's like a weird, it's a bubble, there's things here that are like, wow, yeah, like this doesn't exist here. So I'm not from the Bay Area, I moved here over, a little over two years ago from the Midwest, uh, from St. Louis. What's the Midwest? Wow, wow. St. Louis, Missouri. I went to undergrad there, and um, prior to that, I was in Minnesota. I've lived in lots of different places. Anyways, I've Minnesota. Minnesota. Is it, do they call soda pop? They do call it pop. Can I have a pop? That's exactly what they ask at the <laughs> restaurant. They're <laughs> like, "What kind of pop do you want?" That's cute. I think that's fun. It was weird for me because I was I grew up on the East Coast where they mm. say soda. Was like, what the hell is this pop? Anyways, I totally derailed the sorry. Yeah, the focus on like real issues. <laughs> what were we talking about? We are talking about what it was like growing up in the Midwest as a trans person of color for you. That is that what we were talking about? Oh, <laughs> yeah. You were you went to undergrad there? Oh, I. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, but we were no no no. The original sorry. I was, the original question was about the Bay Area. About <gasps> oh yeah. yeah. I think I got contact eye. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So your question was about the Bay Area and is it as quote unquote liberal as people make out to be? And I think yeah. that in general, uh, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, fuck shit's everywhere. Um, I feel like we live in a bubble. And, and I, I think, yeah, I don't know, living in the Midwest for over 10 years, it's way different there. I mean, the upper Midwest is also different from the southern Midwest. I should stop. Anyways, the Midwest is definitely different from the Bay Area. Um, Less diverse? There is, there are folks of color there, but St. Louis in particular is very culturally uh, segregated. Mm. Um, and for me, in my experience in St. Louis, I feel like it's a very black and white city. And there's like definitely Asian folks, South Asian folks there, um, Latinx folks. But I felt like walking down the street, I was like one of few Asian people. Mm. So being here in the Bay Area is like, whoa. Because it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. So <clears throat> anyways. Um, you like it here? I love it here in the Bay. Mm. I like the Bay Area. Yeah, same. Yeah. So. I don't think I could live anywhere else. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was interesting transitioning in the Midwest. You want to talk about that? You want me to talk about that? I mean, if you want to. I mean, I talk about that. Whatever you think that you want, whatever you're comfortable talking about, and whatever you think may relate to people who watch, who maybe having a similar experience and not and like these stories aren't told anywhere else mm -hmm. uh yeah so i started my gender journey in the midwest in st louis like after college um and i was really lucky and i was able to have or like find resources therapy a doctor um to yeah figure that out and then eventually i started hormones and you know if you want to compare cities I feel like the Bay Area is just like pretty has a lot of resources for trans folks um, just like different clinics places that have therapy for specifically queer and trans folks uh, there really wasn't much of that in St. Louis when I was there um, so I feel again like I was really lucky to be able to like find a trans competent doctor who was willing to prescribe me testosterone um, mm. So yeah, I started that in like January of 2012. So I've been on testosterone for like seven years now and it has ruined my skin. Um, and yeah, uh, 
second puberty. It basically, yeah, it started a second puberty, and then second puberty, I just like, yeah, I broke out. Mm. So I feel like, yeah, the majority of my acne is hormonal. Can I ask you really personal questions <laughs> about hormones? Yeah. So Eli and I have had conversations prior to this about our, like, we're both on hormones, we both identify as trans, and so, like, we both were thinking it may be helpful for you to actually hear about what it's like with relation to the use of hormones and being trans around certain topics that may be kind of, like, really not talked about a lot or by a lot of people or just have a lot of, like, myths around. And I know I made another video that's titled I'm Transgender and Hormone Talk and Boob Growth and whatever. Go watch it. <laughs> but also... I'm at a different place now in my transition and or in, in my existence and I think that I've kind of mellowed out with regard to my sex drive. Like I know that you mentioned having like, it feels like you're going through puberty again. That was definitely my first year on hormones. My I was horny all the time, hungry and tired. Like for a year straight of my life. I was just like, I'm horny, I need to, I'm horny, I'm hungry and I need to sleep. What was it like for you for your first year or so? Same. Same? Minus the sleep. I think that's just my general. Mm -hmm. I tend to be tired and then run low energy, but like, yeah, no, my sex drive went up, all that. Mm -hmm. I got, yeah, I gained a lot of, I gained, yeah, I gained weight my first year and a half on hormones. And then a lot of that also too was like fat redistributing in my body because testosterone does that too. So. That's what estrogen did with my body. I gained like 20 or 35 pounds and I was like, hey. But then it like just decided to move different places. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, and then after that first year of being on hormones, I noticed that things kind of mellowed out and that my libido, for those of you who don't know what that means, I mean sex drive, but my sex drive kind of mellowed out. And now I feel like on a daily basis, I, I don't have the like urge or like internal need that I used to have pre-hormones. Like I no longer have like an urge to have sex or to like have an orgasm every single day. Otherwise I'm gonna like lose control of myself. Like now I feel like, what ofs? I Like I can have intimacy with myself or with someone else or with other people on my own terms when I want it. How did like, is that too invasive if I ask you what your experience is like? My sex drive is just, yeah. Is yeah. what? It, my sex drive is just, it's just high. And <laughs> yeah. That's that real. Testosterone. Yeah. That's um, real. I think in general, just my sex drive's high, been high prior to taking hormones. And then like now it's just, yep. That's also real. Yeah. So. Huh. Nice. And that's that on that. Yeah, so that was trans sex talk 101. <laughs> well, like libido talk. Yeah. So... Another thing that I was hoping that we could maybe highlight on just very quickly, because I know this video is going to be a long one, but it's important, is how you've found and navigated community. How I've found and navigated community. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on like what, like in the, depending on what part of my life, um, you know, I think that the drag community helped back in college. You in performed college. drag, right? Yeah, I performed as a drag king for like seven years in St. Louis. That's so awesome. Um, and so I think that that was helpful. Um, I was also getting into like organizing mm. um, and volunteering within the queer community in St. Louis. So I think that definitely um, connected me with folks. And um, yeah, I feel like that those, those have been the main ways. And then like moving to the Bay Area, like I came here, I knew some folks, some organizers. Um, and then when I got into the, <laughs> and then when I got into uh, day job, I mean, mm -hmm. I met folks that way too. Um, and so, 
Yeah, and then I started throwing parties and DJing, and so that also, <laughs> that's how I connect with community. Yes, um, party animal. That's awesome. I feel like a lot of the times people find, especially in queer communities, people find like a sense of their own community by going to queer um, events. I mean, that's how I've met a lot of my current queer friends and really having those spaces available to us to exist without the same type of judgments that we get outside of queer spaces, I think is like invaluable. And so I encourage you to um, consider the possibility of checking out a queer specific space if you're um, beginning to identify as queer or you're exploring your identity in, what, in any capacity with regard to your gender, your sexuality, whatever. Um, to yeah, to make a to make a new friend within the queer community, and maybe that friendship could teach you more about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We're here. We're queer. We're here. We're queer, and we're not going anywhere. <laughs> no. So, if anything, I want to leave this video. I want to leave you all off with a positive note, and I want to uplift and celebrate Eli and not only your hotness and your intellect and your motivation and drive and your ambition and being your own like business entrepreneur. So we will drop the link for Eli's merch down below in the description box. And also um, you have your, we'll provide your links. All the things, all the social media, mm -hmm. website. Yeah, it'll be all below. Mm -hmm. Loves it. And how do you like this final look? I do. I love it. I, I really do. I like it. And also, you know, supporting our queen, Rihanna. Mm, mm -hmm. With this Fenty Beauty. Rihanna really brought the A game with this Fenty Beauty. <sighs> I don't, like, I had no doubts with her. Mm -hmm. You look so good. Thank you. Yes. You're ready for the club. I am. But not really. Because we're old and tired. Oh my god, that's real. Yeah. As soon as you leave, I'm taking my makeup off and going to bed. That's so real. That's so real. <laughs> you got early I'm class. so tired. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, any final thoughts for the viewers? Um. Thank you so much for uh, mm -hmm. teaching me these makeup basics. It's oh, really helpful. Cool. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I, when I lived my life as a girl, I never wore makeup. I never. Yeah. I, and so I was always pretty mask presenting. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I don't really, I'm very, very ignorant to makeup. And this was super helpful. And I think this is a very easy routine. So nice. I'm excited to incorporate it into my life. Cool. Well, I think you look ready to slay the runway. Hey, thank you. Yeah. And thank you to all of you for watching the video. I hope that you found some moment of happiness, peace, or joy, or even laughter with our shenanigans. And Definitely check out Eli's um, work that he does. The links will be in the description box below. Support your fellow trans community. And until we see you next time, keep it hella queer and hella magical.